Hello, everyone, and welcome to the lecture on significant figures. So before we begin, make sure that you have your notes ready, and it'll also be extremely helpful if you also have your calculator. All right, um, this is going to be a two-part series. Um, this is part one on significant figures. All right, let's begin. Okay, so um, there are certain rules. There's only really four well, there's five rules, but there's really only four rules that we're going to concentrate on. So um, the first thing that we need to kind of get clear in your head is what are we talking about when we say the word significant figure? Okay, well, you know what the word significant means. It means to be important, right? You are significant. You can be counted. Um, a figure in this particular um, instant is just a number. Okay, so a significant number, a number that has meaning. All right, so once we get through the rules, once we get to the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about science and the use of significant figures because right now you're going to be like, why are we learning this? All right, well, um, in science we oftentimes have to make tons and tons of measurements in the lab, and I will say this over and over, the tool you use, the type of tool that you use, will determine the accuracy of the measurement that you make. So um, one of the things that I'm going to do and demonstrate in the classroom, those of you who are listening, you have no idea what I'm doing right now, but um, who in the classroom thinks that they are the tallest person here? You're funny. Yeah, it might be you. Here, come here. I want to I wanna demonstrate something. Okay, one of the things that I always tell my students is there's um, usually students are not going to be over two meters tall. You're like, meters? What's meters? All right, well, hey guys, seriously, we don't like to use feet. You guys know that, right? In the scientific community, we don't use feet, we don't use inches, we don't use yards. All right, we use meters and centimeters and millimeters, right? All right, well, I can guarantee that he is not going to be over two meters tall. This is a meter stick. All right, so I'm going to put it down right here. And why don't you go ahead and put your hand right there. Okay, just kind of hold still. Do you guys agree he's not over two meters tall? He's tall. Yeah, nice try. <laughs> no tippy toes. <laughs> um, what do you guys think he is? He's probably a little over one. One point, what would you say from your standpoint? 1.8, 1.9. Maybe someone in here is going to be really smart and be like, 1.75. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you. Um, well, okay, so the thing that I want to make sure you understand is that I could report his height with a certain amount of accuracy depending on the type of tool that I'm using, right? From your vantage point, you couldn't see the tick marks on this ruler, right? And so you approximated his height at about 1.8, right? Approximately 1.8 meters. That would be an approximation. Now, if I wanted to get really close in, I could make that measurement way more accurate. But I'd probably have to have him take off his shoes. He would have to be up against a flat surface, probably against a wall. And then I would use this tool over again. But this time, I would be very careful, wouldn't I? So if I wanted to get more numbers at the end of that measurement, instead of saying just 1.7 or 1.8, what if I said 1.8? Three. What if I tacked on the number three at the very end? Doesn't that give the measurement more significance, more accuracy, more precision? Wouldn't you say? That's why we're learning this. All right. The number of digits, the number of figures, if you will, that you see in a measurement can make a difference in the amount of accuracy that you can report. And remember, the tool you use, this, will determine how many digits I'm allowed to report. So now you guys understand why it's so important that I'm teaching this to you, because you've got to make accurate measurements in my classroom. All right? So when we make accurate measurements, eventually you're going to learn that you have to manipulate those measurements and do some math to them, right? You collect data, and then you analyze it. You might have to multiply, add, subtract, divide, stuff like that, right? There are rules for all of that. What's going on there? All right, everyone, let's proceed. Um, so let's look at uh, number one. Uh, the rule here says every non-zero, the digits 1 through 9, um, are assumed to be significant. What's a non-zero? Non-zeros 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. What's the only number I didn't say? Zero. So there must be something really special about zeros. Hey guys, rule number one 
is all about non-zeros. Guess what the other three rules that I have to teach you are all about? Zeros. Ha 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 ha. All right, so zeros are the tricky ones. All right, let's go to rule two. Okay, rule number two says zeros appearing between non-zero digits are significant. All right, you can write that rule down, but you're like, huh, huh, that seems kind of strange. Hey guys, I love to nickname these rules. Uh, rule number one is non-zeros. That's my nickname for rule number one. Rule number two, this is my nickname for rule number two. I call it the bookend rule. Do you guys know the purpose of bookends on a bookshelf? What do they do? Yeah, they hold the books up in the middle, right? So this rule kind of has the same principle. If you have a non-zero on the left side of a number and you have another non-zero on the right side of the number, it doesn't matter how many zeros are in between those guys. They're like books. They get held up. As long as you have like an anchor on the left, an anchor on the right, the books in between, the zeros in between, they are held up. They are held significant. So if you look at these examples that I gave you, the number 7,003, you know the 7 is significant, rule number 1, super easy. You know the 3 is significant, again, rule number 1, super easy. But it's all about the zeros. Look at the placement of the zeros on the digit 7,003. They are in between the 7 and the 3. All right, the 7 and the 3, those are your bookends. All the zeros in between count. So the number 7,003 has four sig figs. Okay. And I use that example. Guys, I could make another example super fast. Let's make sure you really understand what I'm saying. Let me give you one additional example, okay? What if I give you the example, hmm, 1,000, no, let's do... 10,003. Okay? You know the one counts. Yay, he counts. You know the three counts. Yay, I'm significant. All right, you have zeros in between. Doesn't matter how many zeros appear in between those two digits. It doesn't matter. They will all become significant. So guys, in this example, 10,003, how many sig figs are there? You got five. All right, does that kind of make sense a little better? Okay. All right. Rule number three starts getting a little tricky. Rule number three is all about zeros on the left side appearing in front of the number. And you're like, what? When are zeros ever in front of the number? There's only one time you will ever see zeros in the front of a number. It's when you've got decimals. So my nickname for rule number three, the decimal rule. Or if you'd like to sound it out, I like to say this. I say this way too many times. Zeros in the front don't count. Zeros in the front don't count. Zeros in the front don't count. Sing it. Zeros in the front don't count. Zeros in the front don't count. Zeros in the front don't count. All right. Um, that's going to be like your chant. You will be going home and you're going to be riding your bike because you don't drive yet. <laughs> All right. Riding your bike and you'll be pedaling and you'll go, zeros in the front don't count. Zeros in the front don't count. All right. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, if you uh, have any friends that are in general chemistry, they already sing this. Every time I'm like, zeros in the front don't count, everyone in the class just erupts and they go, zeros in the front don't count. <laughs> All right, anyway. All right, so zeros in the front don't count. And at the bottom, I gave you a few examples here. So the reason why they don't count is uh, if you know scientific, uh, scientific notation really, really well, you know that the purpose of using scientific notation is to minimize the number of times that you have to draw the dang zero, right? So if you're really good with scientific notation and you can really go fluid and think fluidly like that, anytime you see zeros, you just whip them out and then you stick the digit in scientific notation, right? Well, that's where this rule came from, all right? So um, this particular guy, the first example here, point zero zero. 7, 1. The zeros right here appear in the front of the number. All right, so the two zeros that you see there don't count towards the significance of the value of the, of the number, okay? It is only the 7 and the 1 that count. 
This first example only has two sig figs. Let's look at the second value here. You only see the zero in the front right here. Oh, by the way, the zero is in the front right there, too. Anyway, um, this zero right here does not count. This is a decimal, and it's in the form of 0.42. You know the four counts, and you know the two counts. Again, this one also has two sig figs. All right, let's look at this last value. All of these zeros in the front are not significant. So it looks like every example that I provided you on this screen, every single one, has two sig figs. Let me see if I can test you a little bit and try to confuse you just a smidge. Make sure you don't forget rule number two, right, the bookend rule. All right, let's see if I can try to, try to mess you up. Check out this example. Point zero, 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 one, zero, zero, three. Very small value. All right, let's test you. Do the zeros in the front count? No. Does this one count? All right, does that three count? Yeah, and then you have zeros in between. Dude, that's a bookend rule. How many sig figs does this value have? Four sig figs. Oh, you guys are so smart. Is this starting to make a little bit of sense? Very good. All right, so let's review. We've talked about non-zeros. Non-zeros are great. They're good. We talked about zeros in between. That's a bookend rule. Those are great. And then we talked about zeros in the front. Zeros in the front are bad. All right, are you following okay? There's only one type of zero left to discuss. We talked about zeros in the front. We talked about zeros in between. What's the only thing left? Zeros in the back. You got it. Rule number four is quite possibly the most confusing rule of them all. All right, make sure that if you're doing these notes, that you, you see how I highlighted in red the word and... Oh man, if you've got like a pen or maybe a dark marker or a highlighter, I would highlight that or change it, change a color or something in your notes because you really need to understand that zeros at the end are only significant if they appear after a decimal point. Okay, so guys, the rule says zeros at the end of the number and to the right of a decimal point are always significant. So the rule can also be rephrased as this. Zeros at the end only count if they are after a decimal. You can rephrase that. Zeros at the end only count if they are after a decimal. And then this one, because it's so tricky, I give you tons of examples. All right, this is the tricky one. This is the kind of the hardest one. So, all right. Um, let's look at some of the examples. Let's look at this first example. 43.00. I think you guys are pretty slick now with the four and the three. You know those are significant. Let's observe the zeros. These zeros are at the end of the number. Now, I have only one question for you. Are they significant because the decimal point is right here? Are those zeros at the end significant? Yes, according to this rule. It doesn't matter how many you see. Okay, it doesn't matter how many you see. See how there's two? Both of these zeros appear after the decimal, and so they are significant. Okay, let's go to this next example, 1.010. All right, you know the one is significant. You know this one is significant. What about this zero that is in between those sig figs? Dude, that's rule number two. That's easy. Is that zero significant? Right here, this one right here? Is that significant? Yes, yes it is. Um, so you can revert to rule number two about the bookends. That's totally significant. Okay. But we do see a zero at the end of this number right here. Is this zero after, here it is, is it after a decimal point? Yes. Therefore, this zero is significant. So this example has four sig figs. This example has four sig figs. Let's look at the last one on the list. All right, I see hands flying. Just a pause. Yeah. That's a really good question. I'm going to repeat it so that you guys can hear it. She said, if you have a number, um, say like, uh, for example, tell me if I'm right, like 100.000000000, right? Let's just pretend. And the zeros go on to infinity. Um, wouldn't there be an infinite number of sig figs? The answer to that is yes, there would be an infinite number of sig figs. There are certain instances in which we can say that there are an infinite number of sig figs, and I'm so glad that you asked this question, because believe it or not, that technically is rule number five. There are certain instances that you can have an infinite number of sig figs. For example, 
guys, what do you call one minute? What is one minute also equal to? 60 seconds. Is it exactly 60 seconds? Would you call that a scientific definition that 60 seconds is a minute? I call it, I call it a very firm definition of what a minute is. A minute is 60 seconds, period. We could say 60.000000000 unto infinity seconds technically is a minute, right? So yes, the answer to your question is yes, you can have an infinite number of sig figs. But it has to be what we like to call a scientific mm, definition, law, like, like conversion. Yeah, okay. And I see another hand, yeah. Yes, so the question was, does the num do the zeros have to be at the end of the number and after a decimal always in order for those guys to be significant? Yes, they have to be both at the same time. Yes, at the end of the number and after a decimal. That's why that word and is so critical. All right, we see some more hands, yeah? Got it. All right, so let's do, um, this is where I branch off of my notes and we start exploring some really strange questions like yours, all right? So can, I'm gonna totally answer your question and then blow your mind. I'm gonna give you some more, okay? You ready? Okay, let's do some practice. So I'm gonna give you guys some crazy practice questions and let's see if you guys can roll with this. So hold on, and discard, okay. okay. Okay, so we are now branching away from the notes for a moment to test whether or not all of these rules are making sense. Okay, technically we've taught you four rules. The fifth was about the infinite number of sig figs. Okay, there are certain instances where you can have an infinite number of sig figs. All right, so let's see. Um, I'm going to pull some examples just out of my hat and totally random, and let's see if you guys can nail it. Okay, let's do. And I encourage you guys to write this in your notes. The more times you see it and play with it, and you look back at your notes and you see examples, the better and more valuable your notes become. Right? All right. Um, here is an example. Let's do the number 4,000. Okay, let's recap. Rule number one says that non-zeros are significant. This number four, he is significant. Rule number two talks about zeros in between non-zeros. I don't have another non-zero over here. Rule number three says that zeros in the front don't count. Well, we have no zeros in the front. This is a large number, not a small number. All right. Then rule number four says, zeros at the end can only count if they appear after a decimal. Technically, this guy's decimal, even though you don't see it, is right here, right? The number 4,000. So everyone, are these zeros after a decimal? No. Are they at the, the end of a number? Yes. So you see, they don't fit the bill. They have to be both at the end of the number and after a decimal in order to count. This example only has one sig fig. Oh snap. Now watch this. I'm going to make one change. I'm going to say 4000.0. This made a huge difference to the accuracy of this measurement, if it were a measurement. Are you guys ready? You know the 4 is significant. We already talked about it. Now you uh, seem to have a 0 at the end of the number right here. Is he after a decimal? Oh my gosh, then he's significant. Now wait a minute. On rule number two, the bookend rule, we need to revise it just a smidgen. Basically, I want you to revise it to say, instead of there's non-zero here and a non-zero here, you know what the non-zeros sometimes could be? They can be significant zeros. The bookend rule will work for either non-zeros or significant digits, but you guys wouldn't have known what I meant if I put that in the rule, right? You'd have been like, what? So guys, this is the bookend rule. You've got a ton of zeros appearing in between two sig figs. This totally changed the entire number. Guess how many sig figs we have now? You got it. Now we went from one to five sig figs and all we did was add a zero after the decimal. Pretty crazy. Okay. All right, let's practice a little bit more, okay? I'm going to give you a decimal this time.
Okay. Rule number one, non-zeros are good. Okay, I like the five and I like the one. Rule number two, zeros in between non-zeros count. All right, zeros in between. Do I have zeros in between? I sure do. They're in between the five and the one. All right, so those count. Rule number three, zeros in the front don't count. Zeros in the front don't count. Those do not count. Those are bad. Rule number four, zeros at the end of the number only count if they are after a decimal. Do we have a zero at the end? Yes, we do. Is this guy after the decimal? Yes, he is. Oh my, you've got five sig figs. That was every single rule that I could think of in one problem. Were you able to follow? It's good. It's really good. All right. You ready? A couple more examples. The number 10, how many sig figs? One. The zero at the end doesn't count because he's not after a decimal. What about 10.0? How many now? Three. This zero at the end is after a decimal. This is one in the front. He is significant. This guy is in between. All right. Why don't you put your pencils down now? Okay. You've got tons of examples. Now let's just watch. This is rapid fire. You'll need this, okay? Here we go. Point zero 0.01. How many? One, because zeros in the front don't count. Zeros in the front don't count. How many now? Two. How many? One. How many now? Good. How many now? Zeros in the front don't count. Zeros at the back do. The one does as well. Are you starting to get it now? Ah, feels good. Feels good. Okay. All right, coming back to our notes. All right. What we're going to do now is a little quiet time. Try these problems by yourself. All right, uh, let's give you guys a, a minute, but um, if you're still working, that's okay. You may want to look up at the board and... Uh, and we'll review, okay? All right. Okay, zeros in the front don't count, right? How many? Three. Good job. Let's do the next one, 10.005. Um, the one in the front is good. The five in the back is good. Dude, this is the bookend rule, right? How many you got? Five. Good job. Let's go to the third one, 16.540. You know the one, six, five, and four are good, but is that zero at the end good? Yes. Yes, it is because it's after a decimal. All right, so that would be five six figs. Let's go to the next example here. So you have zeros in the front, don't count. Zeros in the front, don't count. All right, so the one in the back, this zero right here on the back, is that good? Yeah, it is. All right, let's go to the next one. Zeros in the front, don't count. How many? Only one. Nice. And then on this one, does that zero at the back count? No, why not? It's not after a decimal. So this one only has two. All right, um, show of hands, how many people said that they got all ALL? -L? Nice. How many people got all but maybe like one or two? One or two mistakes. Anybody do more than one or two mistakes? Nailed it. Oh, you guys are awesome. This is fabulous. All right, you guys. Um, let's talk about the next thing that is going to occur to you. You will eventually need to start rounding. Okay. Um, I know it seems like, oh my gosh, rounding? Seriously, Mrs. Crowley? Didn't we learn that in like elementary school? Why, yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> but it's a little trickier when I ask you for a specific number of significant figures. So these particular problems are going to be a great example to show you that sometimes it's not as easy as you think. All right. I want each of these values rounded so that their answer has four sig figs. Now there's a special rule. I don't know if you want to write this one down. When you round sig figs, you cannot change the value of the number. That's really, really, really important. In other words, the magnitude of the number cannot change. Obviously, you're going to probably round the last number, right? You, you remember rounding. Sometimes you have to round up, right? When do you have to round up? When the next number over is a five or higher. Okay, so you got the idea of rounding. Um, but uh, sometimes it gets really tricky and students do some really silly, silly, and I call them silly, mistakes. So let's see what you guys think, okay? I'm going to do some of these with you and I have a technique. I would strongly recommend that you walk before you run.
on this situation. So you may need to use the technique I'm showing you. Don't be pompous and uh, make a stupid mistake. So hopefully my little trick that I'm going to show you will avoid stupid mistakes. Are you guys ready to roll? Okay. Let's do the first example. So 314.721 meters. The way that I work this is I know that I need four sig figs in my answer. The trick is to read this number like a book. Remember, zeros in the front don't count, so you're going to go to the first number that means something. Luckily in this first example, you have no zeros in the front. So let's read it like a book from left to right. The first digit that means anything to me is this three. I know he counts. He's good. Read it like a book right after that first digit that you identify as being significant. So I need four digits, right? I'm going to underline the first four digits in the value. I have to have these digits. I have to. I have to have four, right? There they are. There's my four. But what's the rule about rounding? You have to check the last digit to see if you need to round up, right? So always remember this. The last digit that you just underlined, you better check to see if you need to round up. And you do that by looking at the next number over. Guys, do I need to round the 7 up? No, I do not. So if I had to reduce this to only four sig figs, I would change this and chop it off to say 314.7. And the unit here was meters, so we can just put a little M in there. Is it the same magnitude of number? Yes. Yes, it is. I kept it at 300 and something, right? Okay. All right, let's go to the second example. In the second example, you've got a ton of zeros in the front. These are not going to go away, but they are not the first significant digit. What is the first significant digit, guys? It is the number one. All right, so I'm going to hit this one. I know I need that. And then count back until you have four digits underlined. It doesn't matter if the next digit is a zero. It doesn't matter. Get your four. Okay. After you've underlined the first four digits that matter to you, guys, always remember this. Check the last digit to see if you need to round up. Ladies and gentlemen, do I need to round this value up? No. I need to have four sig figs in my final answer. The zeros in the front, remember how I said, they may not be significant, but I can't like just chop them off or get rid of them, right? So, hey guys, put them back in. Remember what I said, you can't change the magnitude or size of the number. You can only round. There is, look, look at the answer. Isn't that four sig figs? The zeros in the front don't count. The one does, the five does, and the zeros in between do. All right, this one is a stickler. Are you ready? This is the fun one. Read it like a book. One, two, three, four. Check the last digit. Do you need to round that guy up? Yep. Hold on, watch this. That is not the correct answer. Pretend instead of uh, uh, me talking about meters, what if I was talking about money and you're my accountant and I ask you, how much money, about how much money do I have in my bank account? And I, and I use the word about. Seriously, if you rounded to this value, I just lost a small fortune. Do you understand that I have to keep the magnitude of the number the same? How do I do that? Well, I've got my four sig figs, so how do I keep the size of the number the same and still maintain four sig figs? Can't I add zeros to the back of that? I can, can't I? Because zeros at the back are only going to be significant if they're after a decimal. <gasps> oh, okay. So how big is this number? All right, well, I did put commas in here for you. Comma, comma. Isn't that still four sig figs, everyone? And isn't it still the same value or magnitude? Ah, I think you're getting it now. All right, let's do the last one because now we got the opposite problem. Here we had tons of digits, right? Too many digits. Now you have the opposite problem. One, two, three, four. You have to have those. But how the heck am I going to get four sig figs? If I go like this, this is wrong. 
First of all, the value of the number is not correct. And secondly, it only has one sig fig. How could I possibly make this four sig figs? Uh, and I see some hands creeping up. That's good. How could I possibly make this four sig figs, guys? What do you say? Dude, decimal. Don't add a zero, though. Decimal. What do you think I'm going to do in order to keep the value of this number the same? Scientific notation. Three, six, seven. There you go. Yay! Now you guys know how to round. All right, everyone, listen. I want you to get as far as you can on the worksheet for sig figs. Now, remember, I did not pass out a worksheet to you. I am saving trees. Where are you going to find the worksheet? On the class website. And so that means you're going to have to do the problems on a separate sheet of paper, right? Hmm. I would expect you guys to get through the first two sections. The last section is about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. You have not learned that yet. Again, this is only part one. All right, everyone. That's it. Ta-ta.